Hey, fashionpreneurs, my name is Jess, and welcome to the Fashionpreneur Diaries. Hello, fashionpreneurs. Hey, y'all. Welcome back for season two of the Fashionpreneur Diaries. I have a studio audience here with me this season. Woo! Okay, so I am here today and I am super excited. Today's entry is all about, it has a lot to do with work ethic, but it's really just gonna be titled, Your Work Ethic Doesn't Match Your Prayers. But I'm gonna be discussing a lot of what I've been doing within quarantine as a fashionpreneur, um, some things that I've been doing to stay um, business oriented, stay ahead in this industry and just be well prepared for what's coming. Um, as you guys know, this quarantine might be ending soon, but the world is not going to be back to normal after this. So there's a lot of things that I had to shift, a lot of major decisions I had to make, and I'm really excited about them. I'm not upset about any of these new shifts. I'm, I'm really just happy about um, the fluff that I've been able to get rid of in this season. So I'm really, really excited. So we're going to get into that. All right, y'all. So welcome back for season two. So what have I been doing? Uh, we wrapped up season one the very end of January. We've been dropping a few um, prayers in between that for April and May, um, but we actually decided to come back early. We weren't supposed to come back for season two until June, but since we're in quarantine, I was like, uh, we're coming back early. So that's what we decided to do. Um, so in this time frame, we've been quite busy. The last entry that I did was all about what it takes to develop a multi-day event. And we wrapped up the Fashionpreneur Retreat. It was a awesome three-day conference. My audience was actually there as well, so I'm really excited about that. And they were there to witness the greatness. <laughs> so, guys, when I say that I have an audience, it's just Gina, as you guys know, from season one. She's been on plenty of entries. And Will, the amazing Will that always used to be in the background doing all, all of this audio and production, he's the person that's allowing this to work properly right now. So they're here with me in quarantine. And we are going to be discussing everything that we've been doing. So first things first, like I said, we just wrapped the Fashionpreneur Retreat. Um, it was held March 12th to the 14th. The devil tried to play us a little bit because it was supposed to be a three-day event, but it stopped at day two. Okay, so the retreat took off the same week that the Rona decided to take off. Okay, so... That Monday prior to the retreat is when I noticed how real the Rona was getting. I think the day, the night before the retreat is the night that um, the NBA announced that they were shutting down. So we were like, oh crap, like this is legit. This is real. Like this is a real pandemic happening right now. Um, so we were still able to um, complete day one of the Fashionpreneur Retreat. Day one was so awesome. It was our VIP day. Um, so we had two different Fashionpreneur tours. Uh, tour A actually was with my very good friend Shay. She is a wholesale buyer um, for many brands along with her own brand, LYS Boutique. And she guided everybody through a full day of just understanding how to purchase wholesale within the fashion district here in LA, um, the processes that goes into that. I also taught her group a marketing class prior to them heading out. Um, we had really good food, we had lunch, it was awesome. Um, and Tour B was with me, and we discussed all things design. If, if you don't know, I am a fashion designer. That is what I do. Um, I love everything about design. I don't really love buying wholesale, honestly. That's just what it is. I don't like the idea of running down to the district and being heavily reliant on vendors to run my business. It's nothing wrong with it. I'm just telling you that this is not what I prefer. Now, my friend Shay, she's a beast at buying, but for me, I don't know how to buy properly. Like it just doesn't work out, right? So I've done it before previously for my brand um, and it didn't work out for me. For me, I know that design is my niche. So that's what I stick to. Uh, that's what I love. That's what I'm passionate about. So I was able to um, teach a really, really diligent uh, manufacturing and product development class. And then we ate lunch together. We went down to the fashion district. 
Um, all of my attendees were able to witness the manufacturing process in person from pattern making to cut and sew. We went to every factory. Um, they were able to understand the process of buying fabrics and um, textiles wholesale. So it was a really awesome experience. And that did not stop, the, the, the day didn't stop there. Like we kept going. So after that, we met back up a few hours later and we had a pitch competition and we were blessed to have some awesome judges. It was myself, Janelle Al Alvarado. She's the amazing owner of Retail Boss Inc. Um, Duke, the founder of Law 17, which is an amazing menswear brand. Um, so check out their brands as well, guys. Um, another amazing judge that was there was Brittany Turner. She's the co-founder of Sorella. So check out SoSorella.com. I was talking to her earlier. I'm really excited. Um, so Britt was there helping me out. Um, my other good friend, Tam Mira, she is the business doctor on Instagram. So you guys have to check her out and she does a lot of investing. Uh, she's hilarious. She actually took like a year off to just chill after she got her doctorate. Like this girl is a beast at investing and um, also gaining grants for small businesses. So she was there. It was really, really stellar. And we had five finalists come up and they pitched their brand for just five minutes and we chose a winner and we announced that winner the next day. Um, so that winner received $2,500 courtesy of um, the Fashionpreneur Academy. Um, the winner also received a full spread in Lux Curves magazine. Um, they got an interview in Lux Curves. Uh, they also um, had coaching with Tamira of... Um, the business doctor on Instagram. So she had coaching with her as well. So we announced our winner the next day. Her name is Grace. She is also an alumna of the Fashionpreneur Academy. So we were super excited about that. Um, so that was day one. It was jam packed. So if you missed the Fashionpreneur retreat, I'm sorry, but we do have a bundle available where you can watch my four favorite classes that were taught live. We have replays available for you. It's available until May 15th. 2020 so after that it won't be available but you can take advantage by going to my instagram irregular underscore just or the fashionpreneur academy's instagram put the link in the bio if you're hearing this after the 15th then it's a dub i'm sorry but you missed out on this amazing information um day two we had classes and curriculum all day we understood manufacturing a little bit further we understood digital marketing we understood accounting we understood how to protect your brands uh, with my lawyer antoine uh, we had a lot we understood sales with um tiana von johnson we we had a lot of classes we had a lot of panels a lot of conversations uh, my good friend Pia Monique of Style 180, an amazing blog site on social media. And she's an amazing stylist. She gave so much game. Like, I had notes for days. Um, if you guys are familiar with Bishmi Cremonti, an amazing designer from Baltimore, a very good friend of mine. He was on Project Runway. Um, he also was there. Uh, we also had Brianna of Matt Brand. I love Matt Brand. She was there. So it was just nonstop. Uh, we also had an awesome marketplace. So... We had a lot that had transpired. We had a lot that we were able to accomplish, but we had to cancel, well, postpone day three of the retreat. We had this really awesome Fashionpreneur Award Ceremony and Gala. Um, we also hosted this last year and it was so lit. And this year it was gonna be super lit again. We had all of these things planned with a red carpet. Um, we had awesome swag bags prepared, but the Rona decided to pull up on us. And any events that were housing over 250 people at the time had to be shut down. So we were expecting over 250 people at the gala. So we had to postpone it. Um, so we hope everything will be cleared up with this Rona, but I don't know if y'all heard, it's supposed to be a second wave. I've accepted it. It's probably gonna be a second wave because we're not listening um, and people are going outside people aren't washing their hands. It's honestly impossible, I feel, to socially distance. Um, I don't know how we're all supposed to stay six feet apart from each other. You can't even walk down the grocery store aisle and be six feet away from somebody. Like, it's impossible. So I don't think this is something that's going to be a quick um, process. I think we're going to be in this for a while. So today we're going to be talking a little bit further about um, some things that you need to be doing and how that work ethic can start matching those prayers even while you're in quarantine. So I've been blessed to see my top sales month ever while in quarantine. Um, so quarantine started for us, what, March 14th. We was all here together and quarantine got real. We realized that we were stuck 
and my best friend over here, Gina, she, that her and Will thought I was tripping, honestly, because when I saw the news that, you know, businesses had to shut down, I started going crazy. I was like, oh my gosh, like, y'all, I don't know what we're going to do. And they were like, no, it's going to be okay. It's going to be good. We're going to be fine. I'm like, no, we can't shut down business. Now I'm honestly like chilling and I low key want to take my time getting back to the real world because this is not that bad. Like it's really not. I've been saving a lot of money. Um, I've been able to work from home and just process things a lot quicker and sufficiently. Um, so I, I'm not really upset with quarantine, you know? But I've been praying through this process of what I'm going to be doing within quarantine. And I've been using it more so as like a fasting time, right? So I'm fasting right now um, beyond quarantine. That's something completely separate. But I feel like this is a wake up call. Um, if you think about it with spiritual eyes and look at it through your spiritual eyes, you'll see this is kind of a time for us to realize what's important, what we need and what we don't need. Um, I've been cutting back on things I never thought I would cut back on. Um, I got, I tried to get rid of one of my phones. I have two phones. I have my personal phone and then I got a track phone, right? And my track phone is the phone that I use for business. I don't like to give out personal, my personal number for business. I like to be able to um, put my little track phone to the side when I'm done working for the day. So that's what I try to do, right? So pretty much I got rid of my track phone for like a week and then I realized like, nah, I need that back. So within this quarantine, me and Gina was talking recently and I told her, I feel like I've been having a tough time making decisions within this season because I just, I feel like I've been way more indecisive um, because you don't know the future. And I've learned to not beat myself up about it. It's just kind of like, yeah, this is the first time you've ever experienced this. You've never been in this situation in your life. You don't know anyone that's been in a situation in your life. Nobody can give you mentorship or, or guidance on how to work through a pandemic um, that's affected the world to this level. Like we've never experienced this. So I've learned to kind of just not beat myself up about it. Um, and I'm taking more time to make decisions within quarantine. That's one thing I've learned about myself. Also, um, I've learned that there's other levels to get to. So 2019 was a great level for me. Like it was a year of just pure level up. I was living in LA, me and my best friend having a great time, single, living my best life. Uh, business was finally at a place where I had only dreamt of it being. And 2020 hit. And I mean, from the first, 2020 just was real ghetto for me, right? And this quarantine only made it worse. I had plans, y'all, like following the retreat. The retreat is the most stressful event I've ever planned in my life. And I have the nerve to do it annually, right? And I promised myself that after this retreat, I was going to take a break. We were going to go on vacation. I was going to come back and take it really light at work. Obviously, that, that didn't happen because of quarantine, right? So that was really, really, really impossible. So I had all these plans of chilling right and that didn't happen like literally the monday after um the retreat i had to get back to work i had to come up with a game plan for my staff i had to make sure that people were still staying employed i had to make sure that products were still able to get developed with all of our factories being shut down i had to think uh very clearly and and with a future mindset right and i had to really plan things uh, with the perspective that i don't know when this is going to change so I realized like this is something I prayed for. I prayed for expansion. I prayed for clarity. I prayed for insight on how I can save revenue um, and make more revenue. I, 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 I dreamt about all these different things I wanted to do in my business. So I realized in that process that a lot of my prayers were being answered even though it wasn't the way that I had foresaw it. So I had to realize that number one in quarantine. Now, being a small business owner in quarantine, I've also learned that there's not a lot of resources for us. As soon as I found out about this pandemic, I um, my business, like I said, had just seen its most successful month in the month of March. But in April, I was like, let's be proactive. There's all these different grants and resources out here, right? So I'm going to apply for the, what was it? The, um, the PP, isn't it called the PPP? The PPP loan, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the PPP loan. So I applied for this loan because basically it's a loan where if you get this um, funding, if you get approved and you use the funding for utilities, 
for your um or for your payroll you won't have to pay it back it's just going to be used for as a grant right so i was like oh, okay well it's free money i'll take advantage of it well i applied for it and i didn't hear anything back applied again didn't hear anything back so i'm like what's what's going on here i quickly realized i didn't even need the the, the funding so again prayers were being answered without me even realizing it like i was subconsciously getting prayers answered that I had prayed for for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time. So with my prayers, I write them down in a journal, right? So my very good friend Tatum, she's actually the executive producer of this amazing podcast. She has this really bomb journal called God is my CEO. I've been writing it for years, right? And when I go back to this book, I've realized that a lot of those prayers that I was, you know, writing out and just trying to formulate and bring it into fruition were now becoming my reality while in quarantine. So don't sleep on quarantine. Don't feel like this is a time where you have to wait. Um, I also had to shift my mindset. I had I kept thinking like, oh, well, we just have to wait until things open back up. We have to wait until life goes back to normal. That's going to be a very long time. OK, I don't think y'all realize where um, we are right now. Unemployment is at an all time high. Um, people are not spending as much money. We are in a recession. Things are not going to be back to the old ways anytime soon. And we need to just accept that. So instead of waiting to start your business and waiting to launch your fashion line and waiting to start purchasing wholesale, just accept that this is the new way of life for now and get comfortable with it. So that's what I had to accept. I was like, we got to stop waiting and we have to start developing. So I'm really excited because uh, my line of irregular exposure, we're developing a brand new collection within this quarantine time. Me and Gina here, if you guys don't know Gina, it's my very best friend. Her real name is Brittany. Her name's not Gina. But we call ourselves Gina and Pam because we lit like that. All right. So pretty much Gina is the uh, marketing manager for Irregular Exposure. And we realized that in this time of quarantine that we need to cut back on so many different things beyond our personal lives, obviously within our businesses. So we were looking at all of our sales at Irregular Exposure, right? And we use this time to put things into perspective and we realize what products we need to keep in stock and what products we need to start removing, right? And we realized that some of our top sellers, we needed to only have them in specific colorways. And we realized that while we were, you know, in our regular day-to-day -day life and we were just going through, we were wasting so much money and we didn't realize it. Where we only might have needed just two colorways in a particular top seller, we had five. And we could have got rid of three of those, right? So I realized like, dang, we, we can make a big shift here. So that's what we decided to do. So I'm really grateful because Gina came up with this really lit idea that we're about to roll out at a regular exposure. And you guys are gonna see, it's not a bunch of stuff online um, starting in June. Uh, you're going to see that it's really just a few pieces, but they're going to be the bomb lit pieces that sell out by the hour, right? So that's the mindset with that. So I'm really excited because these are the these are the expansion ideas that I couldn't come up with when I was just ripping and running. So I've been using this time to really sit um, and be honest with self, get a lot of clarity, a lot of insight on what direction my businesses need to go in. So I encourage you guys to do the same. Look at this time as an opportunity to just accept it for what it is. If you're waiting for life to go back to normal, you might as well hang it up. I literally had to transition all of my production. We got all of our products produced here in Los Angeles. We now had to transfer that production and get things made overseas again. Um, we Thank God we still had those relationships and we've been able to nurture them for so many years. So we were able to transition manufacturing back overseas. However, we don't know the future of the world. These factories could be shut down again at any day, right? So they could be shut down at any time, any hour. We don't know what this pandemic is going to do at all, right? So we're now getting products produced both in the US and overseas right now, just to be proactive. That's double cost, that's double production, but these are the things that are required for us to operate our business with a certain diligence and make sure that we're prepared for the future because we don't know what that is, right? So all we can do is be well prepared. Um, so we thank God we have not seen a huge decrease. Um, we had a couple of slow days, but nothing major. Like we've still seen high volume numbers. Um, one of my other businesses had its top grossing um, 72 hours uh, from May 1st to May 3rd. Like this is stuff you can't make up. 
right? So these are things that we were praying over, but we need to just also have the insight to think clearly. So I appreciate this time, honestly. Hey, fashionpreneurs, I hope you are enjoying this entry of the Fashionpreneur Diaries, but I wanted to personally invite you to my brand new masterclass, Wholesale Vendors Decoded. I'm going to teach you how to launch and develop your fashion line, no matter if you're looking to purchase wholesale or become a brand new fashion designer. We're going to cover it all, and it is very quarantine friendly, on a budget. I know things got super real, super quick this year, so I wanna help you understand how how to effectively launch this brand on a budget while in quarantine. It's still very possible and I'm still seeing six figures a month and I want to help you do the same. All right, so make sure that you register now at the fashionpreneuracademy.com. Now, let's get a little deeper into this whole work ethic doesn't match your prayer vibe, right? Let's, let's get all the way into it. So, like I said, a lot of people that I talk to, at least within the Fashionpreneur Academy, if you guys don't know, we offer this really bomb 90 day intensive curriculum and I talk to clients within that program every single day. And when I talk to a lot of those clients, last month particularly, we had to pray together for a really long time because a couple of clients came to me and said, Jess, I just launched my brand. Um, before I started working with you, I launched my brand or right, um, maybe like three weeks in, I launched my brand and I only had this many sales. I only had that many sales. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know what I'm not getting. I don't know why people aren't buying from me. Well, there's a few different reasons that could be happening. Number one, we're in the middle of a pandemic, right? That's number one. So a lot of people don't have the money that they used to have. And if they do have it, a lot of people are spending more wisely. So that's number one. Number two, Something I had to make my clients do to realize like, hey, you're saying that you're asking and you're, you're manifesting that you're going to have this six figure year. You're going to have this five figure month, right? Well, if those things are going to come into fruition, you have to make space for those to happen. So let's look at the brand as a whole. So what I want you guys to do for homework, okay? I want you guys to look at your brands. Even if you haven't launched yet, look at three of your favorite brands. I always look at my favorite brands. Look at three of your favorite brands, right? That you aspire to compete with one day. You aspire to be in the market with one day, right? Let's look at those brands and let's look at their entire funnel. So if I go from their social media, Instagram, for example, and I click the link in their bio and it takes me to their website and I purchase items or I add to cart, what does that process look like? Was it easy for me? What attracted me to even add products to their cart? What attracted me to feel like this is one of my favorite brands? Like, what is it about it? Is it their content? Is it what they post on social media overall? Um, is it their brand voice? Do you feel like you're a part of their community? Do you feel like they're relatable? What made you click the link in the bio? Ask yourself this question when you're looking at your own brand. So if you have a personal page and you got food over here, you got recipes right here, you got pictures of you and your babies, and then you got an outfit saying shop now, that's not a brand. That's not a brand, right? So we have to make sure that we're making room for what we're saying we want. It's not going to happen overnight. And people are just not going to shop because you're cute. Okay, it takes a very long time. It took me almost 10 years to see a profit in my business when I first launched it. But imagine if I would have gave up a year or two, like life would be completely different. So let's make room for what we're saying that we want. Okay, so I've been telling my clients to go through their funnel. Click the link in your bio. What do people see when they go to your site? Um, now, if you feel like because you're in quarantine, you can launch right now, you don't know what the future holds. You know how much you could be doing right now? You could be developing so much content right now. That's what I've been doing. Me and Britt here have been shooting like every other weekend, creating content. We went and bought a rain light while in quarantine. We have somebody coming this evening to my office to build a set, a new set for photo shoot content and for visual content. Um, like we're not playing. Like we getting it in the quarantine. I don't know what y'all doing, but we're creating content nonstop. And we're able to house that content and roll it out so that we have content for weeks at a time. So I've been developing content nonstop while in quarantine. Even if you haven't launched a brand yet, you guys can still be developing content that's still going to attract your certain community, right? So what I mean by that is, let's say you want to start a fashion boutique and you want to now develop this brand that's going to serve a community of women that have trouble finding products because they're petite. Right, they have a really tough time finding tailored jeans that fit to a tee. 
um, that fit their curves and they're short, they can't find the best pants, right? This is just an example. That's a niche market. So first thing you guys need to be doing when we're writing out these things that we want and we're trying to write out all these things and, and these prayers and we're saying like, you know, we want to have this six figure brand. Let's figure out what we're selling first and foremost. So ask yourself, what are you selling, right? And if we have this example, petite line, then we can start putting out content for petite women. We might not have one product yet, but you can start building your community right now without having any products. If you're a petite, a petite woman and you represent your brand, start taking some pictures. Show me five different ways to style a basic pair of denim jeans as a petite woman. Show me three different ways to style a white tee and it doesn't look like I'm literally swimming in it because I'm a petite woman. Like show me how to solve problems as a petite woman so that once you do finally launch, you already have a community built and a following behind it. You guys should also be gaining subscribers. If you don't have products on your site yet, why don't you have a landing page that says coming soon with your logo and people can subscribe to become a part of your community and hear your voice? Why aren't you sending out email blasts that's just simply blogs about three different ways to wear a white button up? Like, you could be putting out content to attract who you want. If you want to be a stylist for plus size women, I have a client right now. She told me, Jess, I want to style Lizzo. That's my dream. That's my goal. I'm praying over that. Okay, we want to style Lizzo. That's our goal. But what does our portfolio say? Right? So how can we attract somebody of that caliber? Or how can we attract somebody with that body type if we don't have anything to show for? So let's start with where we are. So if we're praying for this massive customer, right? And this, this massive client, then let's start working with the person that's going to align with somebody that attracts Lizzo, right? So we can get on that radar. So let's start looking for other curvy women that are still building their followings. And y'all know what I like to do? I like to look on YouTube for a lot of up and coming YouTubers. YouTube is lit. There's a lot of young girls on YouTube. I've accepted that I'm not young anymore. Um, I'm, we, we still kind of young, right? I mean, we're not that young no more. But I mean, this one, you know, she's getting up there. You're getting up there. I'm still. Uh, my birthday is like two weeks before yours. My bad. Uh, okay, so I've accepted that I'm not the young one no more though. Like, it's, it's a lot of YouTubers up and coming. So if you go on there, you will find girls that have millions of subscribers. If the, You could do a video with them to create content just to get your voice out there. Without having one product. It's like you got to get creative, right? So this is the time to create content. That's all I'm doing is creating content nonstop. So that is what I'm doing. I am on YouTube. I'm creating content. I'm looking for new YouTubers. I'm sliding in DMs like, girl, we got to do a video. You got to do a, a haul on our products. Like we are getting creative with our marketing. We're also simplifying the process. We're not making it too stressful to be a part of our community. Like just, just shop. And I think this is also a time where you guys can be simplifying your brands, right? So... Things that I'm praying for right now is um, processes to expand while in quarantine. All right. I'm praying for strategies on how to simplify the process. I don't need, don't, you don't have to overthink everything and make it too much. So I talked to a client recently, uh, well, a potential client for the Fashionpreneur Academy. And she was like, oh, Jess, I want to have these boxes. And the only way you can get a box is if you're on this mailing list. And then if you're on this mailing list, you'll get this box. It's too, don't, don't do all that. Just make it simple. Make people feel comfortable to even want to shop with you or to be interested in your service. So pray over the simplification of your processes within this season. Okay? So I will be doing that right now. Um, don't overthink it. Like, keep it simple. When you overthink it, you're only making it more stressful for people to shop with you and purchase from you. Make it simple for people to spend money. I had to simplify a lot of things. Like even within the Fashionpreneur Academy, I am a very, very detailed teacher. And I had to simplify some of my courses and classes and modules so that people would feel more comfortable and feel like, hey, I can learn at this level. It's for everybody. The curriculum is for everybody. But you might not feel comfortable because of certain things that, that you have witnessed, right? So we have to make things simple. Just simple. I started doing a lot of giveaways. If you guys look on my, on my uh, Instagram pages, at regular Jess, Fashionpreneur Academy. I've been doing giveaways where I just give away $50 today, $20 today for lunch. I've been giving away cash apps if you can count how many bottles was in one of these pictures for a sponsor. Um, Bel Air sponsored the Fashionpreneur Retreat and I put up a video where if you could guess how many bottles was in the picture, you won like $50 on a cash app. Um, I gave away a gift card to my brand if you followed me and you sent three more followers my way. I gave, gave away a $150 gift card, but do you realize that, that with that $150 giveaway, 
You know how many other customers now know about me that didn't know just because they started following? Get creative. Like, content is king, y'all. Like, content is more powerful sometimes than the product. So this is a time to be developing your communities, and then you can still launch in quarantine. If you don't take those pictures in your house and set up shop, like, there's no reason to wait. So if your work ethic is on chill right now and you, you, you relaxing because you're in quarantine, well, okay, cool, but just understand, don't come to me and tell me, well, I didn't get this result and I got to wait. Why? Why do you have to wait? You have everything you need. I always say this. You have everything you need. So there's no need to wait. There's no need to hold off. Let's get to work. So if your work ethic is on zero right now, but you're saying to me that you want to start this brand, but you got to wait until this and that, then your mindset and your mentality is already not prepared for entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship is forever dealing with pandemics. Okay, like legit. There have been times where everything went wrong in business. Everything went wrong in production and development. We just had a situation where um, we wasted probably like $600 on production that we can't put out. So, like, welcome to the real world of entrepreneurship. You're going to waste money. You're going to take L's. You're going to understand how to develop your business and be really, really great at it, though. Like, you don't see 150K months like we were able to see in March in business. You don't see those type of months if you're a punk. You don't see those type of months if, you, if you're not willing to let the fear go and let faith walk. Like, you're not going to see that type of money. Okay, so it's a different mindset that comes with that level of growth and expansion. So the first thing that you guys should be also considering what I used, I remember when I first left my nine to five, one of the things I prayed for was just to survive. So again, if I have a client like the client I had that said, I want to work with Lizzo, let's first survive. Can we survive? So step one the, is to focus on the best next step to make this your reality. So if you know you want to have a million dollar brand. You want to have an empire. You want to just build generational wealth within your businesses. You want to just be this amazing creative. You want to be in magazines. You want to have all these things for your brand, right? You want to see success. You want to see money. You want to see growth. You want to see all those things. If you want those things to be your reality, let's start with the best next step. So if we're working right now, nine to five, I shared this story at the retreat. Um, when I was working nine to five, I worked in property management. I worked there for five years and I also was developing my line continuously throughout the process. So I was manufacturing pieces. I was putting out new product. I was doing fashion shows in New York on the weekends. And I remember going back to work and this girl came into my leasing office that following Monday after I had did this crazy, amazing fashion show during fashion week. And she was like, I'm so surprised you work here. And I was like, what? And she was like, I'm so surprised to see that you work here. And I was like, why? And she was like, yo, you're like a legit designer. Like, I'm so surprised you work here. And I was like, dang, like, that's, that's crazy. And I didn't take it, I didn't take offense to it. I took it as like, yo, you're greater than this. And that same week, I was offered a promotion, right? So I was transferred to a different office. And I remember being at this office, I hated the job once I got to this new office. I stayed all of three months when I got to this new office. And I remember my brother came to me and was like, yo, like, why won't you just leave the job? I'm going to give you some money. I think you need money. So I'm going to give you $10,000, right? And my brother is a real estate investor, very successful entrepreneur. So he's like, I'll give you $10,000 if you give your job two weeks notice. I gave my job two weeks notice, okay? Now, the last day, he comes up there with the money for me gives me the money the next day is my first full day of entrepreneurship I remember sitting in my apartment in Baltimore with my little computer I, I started my day at like 7 30 in the morning I didn't know what I was doing I didn't know my plan but I knew I had to make some money let me tell y'all how I made twelve thousand dollars in my first 24 hours of being an entrepreneur so I tried to get my brother back the 10k the very next day I'm like yo I got your money today he told me I could pay it back to him over um like five years something crazy he was like, no, that's the whole point. Keep it. You never needed the money. All you needed was time. And that was the greatest lesson anybody in this world has ever taught me. I didn't need the money. All I needed was the time. So me being at my nine to five all this time was the real holder. That was the major key in this whole process. You never needed the money. You just needed the time. If you put in 12 hours today into doing follow-up calls and sending email blasts to your customers and getting on the phone to see what your customers want, and you spend four hours today buying wholesale and adding, uh, making, a, making a lookbook for your, your customers so they can understand what's going to be rolling out. If you spend your time doing that, you will see a different result. 
but we only putting in two hours on our business because we're chilling in quarantine or because we're working and we're dedicating 10 hours of our day to working. We're dedicating our whole day to working, being parents, being a mom, whatever your story might be, right? You have no time to see the result. So the value is in the time. It's really not the money. So people always tell me like, oh, this is why you guys hear of people starting brands with $500 and $300. You guys hear those stories and you're like, what? How did that happen? It, it is very possible because if you have the time with that $500, you can get a completely different result from somebody that has $500 but only two hours to spare per week. So when I started putting in work ethic and valuing the power of time, I got the result. So you guys have a blessing right now. You have time. Even if you're working from home, you have time. Value your time, schedule your time, and treat this with discipline and dignity, and I guarantee you, you will see a different result. So I hold myself to a certain standard. I have to complete a certain amount of hours of work per day. I also am still taking things lightly on certain days because there's not as much that has to be done. And I've been blessed to be able to even see higher results with less work. So these are things that I pray for. You understand what I'm saying? So your work ethic has to match your prayers. So you have time right now value that time let's allocate our time let's schedule our time let's stop answering the phone all day for our home girl that want to talk she want to talk about the hood rat right stuff all night she want to talk and play we want to giggle like we got to save that for the weekend still because i can't answer the phone all day i do not answer my phones all day sunday i barely answer the phone like barely that's my chill day that's my day for myself that's my day to watch insecure and y'all know how we feel about insecure Okay, it's getting real real with Molly right now, so you can't, you can't, you can't bother me on Sunday, all right? I'm only talking to my mama on Sunday and my family, and that's it. Boom. Like, that's the structure, right? During the week, I probably won't answer the phone while I'm working. I will gladly text you, don't let you know I'll hit you up when I finish working, all right? Like, there has to be a certain discipline to this work ethic. So if you're not going to be disciplined, you will not get the result. So if you're one of those people like, nothing's not working for me, nothing's working, I don't know why nothing's working for my business, I don't know why I'm not seeing a result, I guarantee you it's you. It always is. It's, it's always us. Whatever outcome you have is based off of your own decisions. Wherever you are in life right now is based off your decision making. There's nobody else to hold accountable. There's nobody else to blame. It's only you. So take this time to hold yourself accountable Take this time to write out that list of prayers, right? Write out those prayers that you guys have. This is your homework, all right? Then we're going we gonna to regroup in our next entry, entry 23. But for entry 22, this is your homework right now. I need you guys to first and foremost, get your prayer journals from Tatum, okay? This is the book that I have. I got one right over here. God is my CEO. Check out Tatum Tamia on Instagram. Get your prayer journal. Get your God is your CEO journal. You're going to write every morning and you're going to write every night. And you're going to hold yourself accountable, okay? I also want you guys to have a personal journal. I have like three journals I write in. All right, so what I do on top of that is I write in my journal directly like paragraphs and paragraphs of what my plans are. Um, literally, I speak it into existence. I speak everything into existence. Like, you don't hear me ever talk about something I might be doing. Like, it's already done if it's for me. So I write out those things and I... I I begin to hold myself accountable to that list of things that I want, all those goals, right? So I hold myself accountable to those goals, and that is what I focus on. And when I am focused, you get a different type of me. It's, it's real lit over here, right? So I want you guys to take your time to get your journals and write. Just write. This is not a plug. Tatum did not tell me to say this. This is just a journal that I've been writing in for the past three years, and it's been holding me very accountable. Tatum also called me yesterday in the morning, like, girl, I had a dream, da, da, da. Like, Tatum is literally, like, my spiritual guide. So that relationship is one of the most valuable ones I have. I love this girl. I ended up having a spiritual dream last night messing with her. So, like, this is the power of prayer. So if you're sleeping on prayer, I'm not trying to force a certain religion on you. If y'all believe in something different, that's your thoughts. I'm a Christian woman, and I pray before I move, and it really works out for me pretty well. Life is lit, so, I mean... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I want you guys to get your journals and I want you guys to begin to hold yourselves accountable. I also encourage you guys to fast. I just started a new fast. And pick something that's taking up all your time. The value of time is where your, your profit is. And profit is not always just financial. Profit is in your health. 
that skin glowing and being better, that body being better. It's all up in there, right? So let's set up the opportunities for that growth to happen. So let's start writing. Let's start fasting. Let's, go, let's start healing. Let's start holding ourselves accountable. Let's start making sure that our personal lives are in a place to even receive what we're asking for. That's usually the major hold up too, right? So let's make sure we have space for what we're asking for to become our realities, guys. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this awesome entry. Season two just started off real lit. You know what I'm saying? So I hope you guys are super excited about an amazing season. We have so many things coming up. So many guests coming. I'm excited to have Brittany Turner of Sorella coming really soon. Um, we were talking to DM earlier, and I'm so excited about that. Uh, we bringing Big Gina back. Big Gina. Big Gina. Gina. Come on, Gina. Say something. We bring you back. Can, you can't wait? Can't wait. All right, Gina can't wait. You guys can catch some other entries from Gina on our YouTube. She talks that talk, and she walks that marketing walk. You know what I'm saying? So we have a lot of that happening. We have a lot of greatness going on this season. So I'm super, 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 super excited. So thank you for listening in for another entry of the Fashionpreneur Diary Season 2. Get your homework done. All right, y'all. Holla back. Don't limit your growth by limiting your brand overall. So vendor images is the first no-go that will have you limited to being an Insta boutique, all right? I see Insta boutiques all day that also in their bio say DM for purchase. What?